there are business executives out there who are creators and they have their own hobbies from playing the guitar to being part of a band. And it humanizes people to let us know that everybody has different seasons to their personality and their character. Welcome to the My Future Business Show, where we get you in front of your best audience and keep you there. Not only are we interviewing the biggest names in business to help you become even more successful, we're inviting you to book your spot on the show to help you grow your business. So at the end of the call, make sure you fill in the interview application form at myfuturebusiness.com forward slash interviews. Hello and welcome back to the My Future Business Show. It's Rick Nusky here. It's wonderful to have you with us today and uh, it's also wonderful to um, have back with me Sasha Legault. Welcome back to the show, Sasha. Hi, Rick. Thank you for welcoming me a year later. Yes, time flies when uh, you're having fun. Now, uh, for everybody who's on the call today, we're going to be talking about... uh, um, creative Circle, of which um, Sasha is the host in residence. We're going to be talking about creativecircle.com, the purpose of the site, and the opportunity that it presents for individuals and businesses to share their stories of innovation and creativity around the world. But before we do any of that, Sasha, uh, it's customary for us to share a little bit about yourself. There would have been um, a, f- a fair amount of new uh, audience members listening into the show, so I think it's important um, to share a little bit about. Uh, your background. So let's start off with where's home for you. So from a business perspective, I work as a management and leadership professional, including a subject matter expert. I come from a business background, therefore I had the privilege of contributing to different industries and different types of organizations, whether they're global, domestic, profit, nonprofit, and this is on my time through Sasha Talks. On the other hand, I also have a competing career path where I work as a spiritualist and I provide readings and spiritual counseling. And there, both of those interests reside on SashaTalks.com. Sasha of SashaTalks.com has been branded over the last decade where people get to meet me. And not only do I contribute content, but I have the privilege of interviewing people where the platform has resulted to be an entertainment and a learning platform. It is a wonderful experience. I know a bit about it. I've seen it. Uh, and uh, with uh, regard to your authorship, I'm wondering if you could just share a little bit about that work as well. I have authored a few books. And one of my goals in the recent times is to author a few more studies. One of the books that started out was Cash and Karma. The Cash and Karma series focuses on professional development, self development how to market yourself out in the job market. And a lot of that content I work on by going out in the field, putting myself out there, meeting and greeting with different companies, interviewing, being interviewed, Mm -hmm. whether it's online, offline, virtually, panel interviews, one-on-one for different positions given my uh, credentials. And then I report back on what works well, what isn't working well, how people need to adjust their marketing Mm-hmm. to see the opportunities that they desire. And in my last book, the Cash and Karma series, there were at least 368 companies that I had engaged in. Wow. That resulted in some observations that I made that I thought needed attention within the United States job market. And mm-hmm. I partnered up with a third party to bring that to the attention of certain political leaders who have more influence to bring those positive changes to cater to the seasoned and the new uh, candidates in the market. So you're definitely making a a significant impact, leaving your dent in the world, and it's a real credit to you. Now, um, with your educational background, what is it exactly? You have an MBA in um, organizational behavior? Yes, I have an MBA in global management, and Mm -hmm. organizational behavior is something that has been part of my life for for the last minimum of 20 years. Mm. And my first degree focus is I'm an alum of Boston University School of Management, very proud of that. Mm -hmm. There I focused on, well, you attend the business school for all four years and you're introduced to different facets of business in depth. And I chose to focus on management and leadership and marketing. So marketing was initially where I started out when I got my degree. Fantastic. Thank you for sharing. I, uh, I, 
I, I listen to this and I think to myself, you're uh, interacting with um, specialists globally, and that's a really important point here. I'm, I'm wondering if we can talk a little bit about this uh, in a moment in terms of do you see any, um, I guess, differences in uh, management behaviour, um, organisational behaviour, the way people um, work together, cultures and those types of things. What is there? Is there a common thread be, be among us globally? There is a common thread that binds all talent and contributors together. And mm -hmm. when I use the word talent, I like to point out talent is something that each individual is born with and they discover it and you get to refine it. Yeah. Skills are, I would say, tools that we go out and acquire, whether it is through education, through taking courses, through apprenticeship. But one thing that talent and skill both have in common is that we continue to refine it. There are many people out there in different corners of the world where entrepreneurship is starting to gain more momentum than even prior to the pandemic. And people are are waking up and they're trying to question, am I happy with the career path that I'm on? To what degree do I want to be reliant on a third party to dictate how far I could go, how much money I could make, the type of lifestyle I could create? And I believe in the last two years, people have become more aware of taking, taking that power back and starting to understand what is life about? Because business is like life. The rules of engagement aren't much different. Sometimes people treat business completely on a polarizing spectrum and treat life differently. But reality is when I look at people that I would want to work with or hire, they're no different when they are on the street than when they are working. You can't completely uh, dissect those two personalities. Yes. And that's the same thing when you're working in a global organization. Yeah, this is wonderful feedback. Um, I think about uh, uh, what you've talked about um, and I wonder, has technology um, made an impact uh, and given people more of an opportunity to go uh, on their own? I believe so, especially in the recent years. I believe that people have developed a new layer of reliance on technology. Mm. And understanding that maybe networking doesn't always come in the form of face-to-face -face engagement. For example, in the last 18 months, a lot of the conferences that take place, team building activities face-to-face, -face, much of it had transferred to online, whether it was situationally or whether it would be indefinitely. And with the type of organizations that I've been in conversation with, it's very interesting to listen to the ideas that they're coming up with where they use the word indefinitely and they don't use it so lightly because they truly do not know how things are going to be a year from now. Now uncertainty is something I could live with, coexist with. Some people aren't good with living with uncertainty. They need to know every detail of how things are going to play out or they're yeah. not going to make a decision. And you and I know that in business and life, there are no guarantees. But we <laughs> that's <can> true. <laughs> <go ourself. laughs> yeah, that's for sure and certain. Now, I, 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 I just wonder. Um, I know that you're, um, you have no boundaries because a lot of what you do is online. But uh, where are you actually located? Where is home for you? I spend majority of my time in the United States, and depending on the type of commitments I have, it's usually on the West Coast mm -hmm. and the East Coast. Nice. And, and in the last two years, because of the flexibility that I've had, I have been fortunate to spend time in at least five to six time zones. Oh wow, that's a, uh, and, and in in all of that, you know, I know I know full well that. Um, all work makes Sasha a little bit dull. So what do you do with yourself when you have some downtime? Do you have any hobbies or sports? I One thing I've acquired in the last year is just going out and spending time in the sun. Nice. Yep. Because I know that prior to that, given the schedule that I was working was so aggressive that I would be in buildings, indoors all the time or at the gym and this has forced me to go out and meet people that I typically would not run into because of the adjustments that we've all made. 
Mm. And it could be from taking rides in the ride share services to going out and joining the hiking groups and also online engagement. Because of the creation of Creative Circle, it also extended a new pathway to interact with business professionals that I don't think would have sought me out otherwise. Oh, fantastic. Now, I know um, that finding a balance between work and play is... is um is important for optimum performance. Do you find that it's useful to just get back to nature, to reset? I have found that throughout my journey during Sasha Talks, every time I took a hiatus, which meant I started spending more time and living life, and then every several months I would come back and I would have new material to share and create. You need some objectivity even in your own life because it's similar to writing a paper. Mm. You could only edit it to the point till your eyeballs are going to fall out, but you're not (laughs) going to pick up anything. (laughs) You're not going to pick up anything objectively. You're not going to have that fresh perspective. You could have the best ideas, but sometimes it's better to just step back and then revisit it. And I know that even in the last year, I embraced new layers of growth in my life with how I understand relationships, how I kind of refined how I work, because I came up with some self-imposed rules that I'm not going to be working past a certain uh, timeline during the week. And it's very important to take care of your health because when you run out of fuel, that means how could you give to others? And I had reached that point a few uh, months ago that I had to rework my clock. Back it off a bit. Absolutely. And it shows how we work then. Because when people come back from vacation, when you pay attention to them, you realize that they're more lively, they're more alert, and they're mm-hmm. ready to jump to new projects. Now, I wasn't on vacation, but I did rework my schedule. And I think that's important because, you know, if you burn out, there's nothing left in the tank, is there? I um, I, I know that we are all on a journey in our lives and you've, you've, you've mentioned some things here and, and, and it makes me think about the people that have, would have helped you become the individual that you've grown into today. When you were younger, did you have any people in your life, you know, uh, relatives or friends or mentors that um, have contributed to the way you think today? It's funny you mentioned that because in the recent months, I've been having flashbacks of individuals that I've worked with very early on in my career path during my teenage years and Mm -hmm. very early on during my academic years because I recall having one of my executives and he told me when he hired me as a teenager, he said, I know you're here just to get a paycheck, but if you really want to learn, I'll pair you up with the manager so they'll show you how to run the business. And I said, absolutely, yes. And to this day, I think of him because he told me, you're not mine forever to keep. You're meant to go out and do great things. And it always makes me question, how come some of these people are able to recognize certain types of talent? What is it about people that makes us trust them and have confidence in them that this person is going to do a good job they're going to run the organization Mm. and just having those inner monologues in terms of my family i would say i'm very fortunate to have the parents that i do because they have not ever told me that certain types of opportunities are meant for certain types of people in terms of characteristics they looked at it as whatever you go out and do just make sure it's something positive (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> I love how they're, um, you know, 100% supportive. As long as you're not hurting or harming uh, people or the environment, they're fully supportive. And that's the sort of parents that we all need, isn't it? I, I, I wonder, before we shift our complete focus to Creative Circle, um, earlier you talked about looking after your body. So what does a daily routine um, include for you? I do my best to eat clean. That does not mean that everything is going to be organic. But Mm. for me, I like to, I love my English breakfast tea with milk. Very nice. And my liters of water. Those are the liquids. As I have my own bowl, I like to eat my calories. I don't like to drink my calories. Yep. And then, of course, we're human. You have to live life. So I don't believe that 
you have to indulge, but of everything course. has to be in moderation. And I make it a point to go out. And because of my work, I do walk out of the home. So I get the fresh air and the exercise. And about two hours ago, I was at the coffee shop and my phone alarm rang because I knew that I need to run back. I have a talk with Rick. <laughs> I'm glad you didn't miss it because this has been an exciting call thus far. Thank you very much. Now, um, I know that you have an entrepreneurial streak running through you. Can you remember the first entrepreneurial experience that you ever had? I'm thinking because I remember even before my collegiate years, I had peers that knew that they wanted to be entrepreneurs. Mm -hmm. When I had embraced and gone to the university for my first degree, I had no plans of entrepreneurship. When I look back at what my high fantasy was, <laughs> it was to get a degree in finance and probably end up in Manhattan, New York City in the United States and be working in one of those high rise buildings and be married at a very young age. And of course I look back and so much has happened, I could laugh it off, but <laughs> I believe whatever I aim for the creator has granted me something significantly better, but I have worked for it. I won't downplay that part. Yes. Uh, I yeah. have worked for it. And of course, it doesn't matter who you are, where you are, what you do. None of us are immune to the rules of life as we're not immune in, to the rules of business. Absolutely. This is Sage Insight. Thank you again for sharing, Sasha. We have a lot of startup entrepreneurs, um, those who are just starting down the path that you and I have already walked a part of. Now, um, I'd love to help educate them and give them some ideas about where they should be focusing. So what have you learned from taking a chance? Is it, is it worthwhile exposing yourself to risk, do you think? Well, compared to how I was even 20 years ago, anti-risk, I mean, I would not even take two steps forward unless you gave me a 98% guarantee. <laughs> I look back and I, of course, with living, you acquire a fresh perspective, but yep. life is full of risks. Now, you want to take healthy risks because whether you walk out of your home, whether you walk out of your office, there's always going to be some degree of risk that you're putting yourself out in the world to coexist. And yep. even if you don't come from the world of business, even it this goes for our relationships with family, friends, just a community. Absolutely. People often say, well, I'm not a leader um, and I'm never going to be a leader. Um, and I can see that you have um, grown, uh, you have changed your mindset, you've uh, um, at least adopted the leadership mentality what does mindset, what part does mindset play in the work that you do and how you help others? I would say a lot of the content that I've been able to create in the recent years of Sasha Talks is a byproduct of me breaking down some of the mental structures that I grew up around. Mm -hmm. And you don't realize how limiting they could be, even though the people around you did their best to bring you as far as they can. But in life, sooner or later, we have to learn how to walk alone and not rely on those mental pillars that are projected onto you. And look, figuring out what is your why for the amount of work that I've done to date, there has to be a bigger picture that regardless of what the weather looks like, a sunny day or a rainy day, you're still going to go out and fulfill your commitment. A lot of people, just because they don't have the vision that's far out and they don't see the results that they're seeking, they give up too easily. Oh, yes. When it comes to entrepreneurship, people like to brag, well, I'm my own boss or uh, all of the vanity reasons why you may want to pursue it. But they learn very fast that you have to create time, you have to create money. And that's the only way you're going to have some form of income coming in that will help you leverage with your vision. Absolutely. Do you do you find, I mean, we're, we're talking about um, helpful people, helping people. That's the My Future Business tagline. That's what you're all about as well. Um, when you have a down day you, and things are not going so great, I think it's useful to share uh, what you do, Sasha, to, I guess, uh, perk yourself back up and get back on the horse, as it were. What do you do when you have a bit of a, a, bit of a down day? I would say either sleep it off, go mm -hmm. for a walk, 
Mm-hmm. And I know those are very topical responses that aren't going to help people because there are those that are waiting to be paid or their client. Yep. They might be having challenges with the client or those that start out, they heavily invest in one or two clients and they think that these two clients are going to take them far. Now, value your relationships, but remember that everybody out there, even as individuals, they're doing the best that they can to live their life. Everybody has a burden to carry. Typically, when we meet people in the context of business, that's the only thing that we know about them, that you need to learn how to diversify your portfolio. And this is something I've learned, especially in the recent times, that it's always good to have interest outside of what you do for a living. Because there's only so much I would want to burden my family, my loved ones with. (laughs) Yep. (laughs) I know what you mean. You need to go out and do something else. You need something to offset that stress. You need to have a good time. And that's something that I have to work on even more. (laughs) No, look, we're all improving. It's all a matter of continuous improvement. As long as we've got two feet in a heartbeat, there's always an opportunity for a brighter day. I'm really, really enjoying this, uh, this content, this conversation. Now, let's shift our complete focus onto Creative Circle. I think a really good place to start is getting you to explain what Creative Circle actually is. Actually, Creative Circle was a domain that was entertained for another type of project. Yet the irony was as over the cusp of the lockdowns that occurred, Mm -hmm. I said, I'm going to revise the vision of this Creative Circle and grant professionals out there an opportunity where they get to share their portfolio of work. They connect with new audiences and they get to share their story of their talent and passion. Because when it comes to creating, it's a very broad term and it's been a great form of education for me because there are people who engage in acting, script writing. It's not always about the arts, painting, modeling. There are business executives out there who are creators and they have their own hobbies from playing the guitar to being part of a band. And it it humanizes people to let us know that everybody has different seasons to their personality and their character. Yeah, that's a that's a fantastic way to explain it. Um, Everybody has seasons to their character. Absolutely love that. I've seen um, a lot of the write ups here, and uh, I wonder um, what sort of format do you use? Is it is it text based, audio, video? How does it how does it work? At the moment, there is a few options. One is article interviews, because there are many people on the circuit and they want to reach a new medium without extending their voice even further. They want something fresh. They could engage in article interviews. All of the content, the questions is created by me. I have Mm -hmm. to stress that none of this is outsourced. It is me. For better or worse, yep, all the questions yep. come from me. It's my curiosity. It's the audience's curiosity. And one of the humbling lessons that I have learned, even in the recent three years, is that every time we go and speak before a new audience or even a familiar host, we have to introduce ourselves. And we can not discount that little detail because you're reaching out to new people. And we can assume that, well, didn't you Google me? I expect you to know who I am. That <laughs> I've noticed that on both ends, but even my guests, that I tell them ahead of time that please don't be taken aback. I might ask you one or two menial questions just mm. to set the healthy baseline of our conversation. Absolutely. Yeah. And I understand that and I see that and I see how you can use that sort of a lead-in question to contextualize the the conversation so again it's a real credit to you and if you um uh, if you're interested to learn more we're going to be sharing um, the details about how you can connect with creative circle and sasha in a little while now um what are the type of individuals that you're looking for for the creative circle does the is there like different categories of people that you're looking for well The best thing about the creativity aspect is, this is something I've noticed, is there are people who come from Hollywood to business executives that are running global corporations, different industries within Mm -hmm. the United States abroad. 
there are entrepreneurs, uh, even from Australia. Even we from have, Australia. Imagine that. doing wonderful work out there. <laughs> I like to call people out from uh, Europe. There are some people that have submitted their pitches from Africa. Now, the thing is many, many, many people submit their pitches, the ones that align with the presentation, the form of Creative Circle are informed of yep. the next steps. And if they choose to invest in themselves, then we welcome them to the platform. Everybody has a story to tell, but it comes down to what is their story? Because some people create on their personal time, other people create for a living that I've had chefs, script writers, and mentors, and mentors who've contributed to the medical field that are doing great work. And I would be completely open to invite musicians, fashion designers, travel bloggers, anyone who's doing great work in the recreation space. Recreation could be from coming up with a beauty mm -hmm. to living your life outdoors. Yeah, wonderful. I, you, you've interviewed and connected with some um, some fascinating people here. I, I'm, I'm looking through the website right now, and I wonder when you sit back and you look at the the amazing platform that you've put together. What are some of the things that you sit back and think I've learned from uh, my contributors? What's some common things that you've taken away? Several weeks ago, I started rereading a lot of the interviews that I had worked with in the article form. Mm -hmm. And whenever I reread the material, I always pick up a new detail about my guests. And that's the thing about writing that made me realize it's one thing in audio form, it has its beauty. Yep. And when in writing, you could reread something, it could be an article, it could be a book, but you look at things from a fresh perspective. And one thing that all of them, regardless of what they do for a living, have taught me is about the human connection. That's excellent feedback. Um, and I would I would agree. I mean, I'm sitting here looking through the library of people's lives, I like to refer it as. And uh, it's just fascinating just to get that snippet, that little window into their, their existence and how they're contributing to the world. Now, I, I wonder when you have a completed interview from a contributor, how do you go about promoting them on Creative Circle? Do they go elsewhere? They are on the Creative Circle website? How does that work? Because Creative Circle at the moment is partnered with Sasha Talks, I also give a shout out to them on the Sasha Talks platform. Sasha Fantastic. Talks has its own blog. Yep. And Creative Circle is partnered with Authors by Sasha, where I showcase authors, writers, those that are focusing on education literacy slash entertainment. That means some people may like to contribute through an audio interview, and that will still gain traction on all of the blogs and the websites within the Sasha Talks realm. And there will be some references made on medium, vocal, it could be PR log. It comes down to the type of content and who is contributing. Now, when I say who, it just comes down to what they do for a living, because maybe they're going to be talking about a, a movie or acting, and it might not be a direct relationship to authors by Sasha. But most of the work, I would say 98% of it makes it on all of the reference platform. Fantastic. I love how you're not just sort of um, just sending it out to all the platforms, especially if it's not relevant for them. Now, um, do contributors get to link out to their own websites if they have one or, you know, LinkedIn or anywhere else like that at all? Yes, I forgot. LinkedIn, a Creative Circle will also have a presence on LinkedIn, most likely as is its own page, because there are some other websites through social media that also reference some of the interviews and it I believe Snapchat, Pinterest, there were three Twitter accounts. The thing about Twitter is that a lot of the people are either on Twitter or Facebook. And yep. for those reasons, I don't update it as regularly. I know there's either a Facebook cult out there and I just don't have any interest in that area. Yeah, no, understood. Because understood. I'm sure people wonder, how does her work get out if she's so conservative in how she markets the speakers? Mm. You self-promote, which yeah. is the whole point. When I self-promote and go out, I'm giving references to these people's work. 
and it's yes, important it, to me there's, because there's not there's not one way of, there's not one way that works it, it work, what's works it's what works for you isn't it right because i look at it this way if the person doesn't take care or respect their own work how are others going to trust me with their message it's similar to looking at somebody and they're preaching to the rest of us how to take care of ourselves but they don't take care of themselves how would i be able to leverage off their guidance and their message mm, absolutely wonderful now um i think we're getting to that point in the call um we've covered off what creative circle is we've talked about the format we've talked about the category of of individuals that you would like to attract and, and help promote um now what is the process of booking a spot on creative circle is there an application process People are, are welcome to go to creativecircle.com with a K, creativecircle.com. Yes. The homepage usually changes images. When we have active contributors, we like to showcase them so they could share it with their audiences. And if you go to interviews, you will get to see a sample of the interviews. If you click on it and it takes you to our article, it means the person contributed to our article. If you click on the picture and it doesn't take you anywhere, it means that they were part of an audio promotion, which also uh -huh. goes on iHeartRadio. And if you go to the contact page, fill out the contact page properly so you will get a <laughs> response. Yes. Uh, if you're looking for an article, if you're looking for a promotion, or you're just looking for uh, to contribute as a guest, all of those options are there. But my friendly guidance would be, the more thorough your submission is, it increases the chances of receiving a response and the, those that align are contacted. So I have to be very transparent about that because some contributors out there from all corners of the world, it could be mm -hmm. for any type of platform, they may think that just because they could pay for a service, they are the right candidate. And sometimes, unfortunately, as in business, it may not be the... No. Yeah, not, so might, might not be the case. You need to have the um, a good uh, good fit between you and the contributors. And if you want to learn more about this, uh, keep in mind that it's uh, creative with a K. So it's K R E A T I V E C I R C L E dot com. I'll be making sure that the link to creativecircle dot com is available to you, no matter where you find this call look down below you will certainly find the link back to sasha and creative circle and with all that being said uh, sasha what a wonderful call thank you so very much for joining me again on the my future business show thank you rick for having me thanks for joining us today if you enjoyed the call then make sure to subscribe leave a comment share us with your friends and book your spot on the show at myfuturebusiness.com forward slash interviews and if you're looking for solutions that will help grow your business then visit myfuturebusiness.com forward slash shop